Hi, welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. Barack Obama's May 27th announcement of a timeline for troop withdrawals from Afghanistan was big news. But the general tone of the coverage of a White House ending the war often neglected to mention Obama's massive escalation of the war. On NPR's Morning Edition, Scott Horsley told listeners that there were 32,000 troops in Afghanistan, and then he added this. This is Obama's fourth visit to Afghanistan as president and his first since 2012. Since that time, U.S. troop levels here have been cut by about two-thirds. But that's an oddly narrow view of Obama's Afghan war policies. When he took office in 2009, there were about 32,000 troops in Afghanistan. He ordered two surges of U.S. forces. Troop levels eventually totaled over 100,000. For whatever reason, this escalation is often written out of the history of the Afghan war. The AP reported, for instance, that Obama's efforts to pull the U.S. out of the lengthy and expensive conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan have largely defined his foreign policy for much of his presidency. And the Washington Post referred to Obama's address at West Point coming more than six years into a presidency devoted to winding down the wars. If one winds down a war by first escalating it, then this makes perfect sense. Do you remember when media tried to convince us that George W. Bush was actually secretly really smart? A 2000 Newsweek article claimed that Bush sat in the back row of the classroom in college as a way to deliver consensus building observations from on high. And Karl Rove used to talk about how he and Bush battled to see who could read more books. There's a similar, almost laughable transparency in current efforts to rebrand Bush's brother, Jeb Bush, who's now seen as a lead contender for the 2016 Republican presidential nomination. Exhibit A is this May 24th New York Times story in which it's hammered home again and again that Jeb Bush is a voracious reader known for his bookishness, someone who, as governor of Florida, flew in Ivy League social scientists for day-long seminars with his staff. He peppers his speeches with statistics, academic-sounding references to quintiles, and self-deprecating jokes about his own geekiness. Now, not everyone agrees with this version of Jeb Bush, mind you, but the dissenters from this earnest egghead portrayal are described as democratic-leaning outsiders who grouse about his over-reliance on conservative think tanks. And that take is countered by the Times directly. But there is little dispute over Mr. Bush's firm command of government's smallest details. Now, the Times sidebar listing the books Jeb Bush is reading includes Bill O'Reilly's latest, about how Jesus was really a sort of Tea Party activist perhaps suggesting the size of the grain of salt with which the whole thing should be taken. And finally, sometimes media executives admit to some obvious problem in the way they cover or fail to cover the world. Like when CNN President Jeff Zucker told the audience at a May 19th awards banquet that CNN didn't cover climate change as much as they should. They haven't, in his words, figured out how to engage the audience in that story in a meaningful way. Well, lucky for us, they got a chance to cover climate change just two days later. The topic on the show out front was, no, really, Wheel of Fortune host Pat Sajak, who was drawing some attention because of some climate denial tweets that he had sent out. Now, as a news hook, this is pretty thin stuff, but CNN managed to make things worse with their follow-up a one-on-one -on -one interview with far-right provocateur Ann Coulter, who was there to defend Sajak against, well, science or something. CNN's coverage of climate change has been bad enough lately, placing deniers on crossfire debate segments, for instance, or debating climate change because it was cold outside. But this was arguably worse presenting one ill-informed guest to defend another ill-informed celebrity. Is this what CNN's president meant when he talked about meaningful engagement? If you want to ask CNN that question, go to FAIR's website and sign our petition. Thanks for joining us this week on FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart.